Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. Hope you all had an enjoyable and safe Halloween weekend. But we have a lot to get to today, so let's get into it. First, a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Jim, Jeff, Alex, Andrew, Jim, Scott, Janny, Gary, Jeff, WT, Steve, Chandler, Alvaro, Mikkel, Daniel, Enric, David, John, Jacqueline, and Eddie. Thank you all very much. Greatly appreciate your support. First up, this Reddit user shared a lovely photo of their dog in their Model Y performance, but the reason I'm actually sharing this is because I realized a lot of people didn't know that this center console could be folded down by itself, so if you didn't know, now you do. Next up, we're not gonna spend too much time here, but there's some discussion going on that Elon would be willing to sell some of his Tesla stock if that money, roughly $6 billion, would actually end world hunger. I and many others have our doubts, which I'll share momentarily, but here he said it. If the World Food Program can describe on this Twitter thread exactly how six billion will solve world hunger, I will sell Tesla stock right now and do it, but it must be open source accounting so the public sees precisely how the money is spent. But then David Beasley, the executive director of the WFP, replied saying the headline is not accurate. Six billion won't actually solve world hunger, but it will prevent geopolitical instability, mass migration, and save 42 million people from the brink of starvation. This link Elon shared here, I'm not actually going to open. It takes us to a page where basically children are forced into sexual favors to actually receive food from some UN officials. So it'll be interesting to see if the WFP comes out with some public accounting and Elon actually goes and sells some Tesla stock or otherwise and does something like this. But look, I'm not claiming to be any sort of expert. I don't know how much throwing money at the hunger issue will help. I do think a lot of it is more of a structural and a mismanagement of resources situation. As you can see, someone said this is true. The primary problem is corrupt government and gross mismanagement of resources. Believe me, I live in South Africa and I've seen it happen to my country over the past 27 years and it's not over yet. So from a very high level, it's kind of like the teach a man how to fish saying. Next up, Elon also shared some articles about unions, which I will link below for you. Of course, these don't have a positive light of unions. Real quick, the only thing I wanna say on the matter, we have to be careful to not use hyperbole every time we talk about a situation. In some instances, unions are great. They have gotten workers and employees 401ks and pensions and protection in ways that they never would have had without a union. And in other cases, they are terrible. There's corruption, it slows down innovation, and there's a lot of problems with unions. So let us all remember that there are different types of unions in different industries. Some are good, some are bad. You can't just make blanket statements about them all together. But one thing that should definitely be talked about more when it comes to Tesla and unions, Sawyer said it best. The media never covers how much money Elon and Tesla have made their employees through stock options because it doesn't fit the narratives. Same with politicians. There are tons of millionaires within Tesla now because of how well the stock and the company has done. Elon replied, by definition, since he owns 20% of Tesla, that means the remaining 80% of ownership and the gains necessarily went to investors and employees. So we'll never know how Tesla would have performed had it had a union, but we know one thing for sure that without it, Plenty of Tesla employees are doing incredibly well, and yes, in fact, much better than counterparts at other union-based companies. Moving on, Tesla has signed a three-year supply contract with China's Ganfang Lithium, who will be supplying battery-grade lithium products to Tesla. Ganfang will provide products to Tesla from 2022 to 2025, but as of now, the sales amount and value of the contract are still pending. Now, Ganfang actually has this closed loop system that many are striving for because their business model covers things from upstream lithium resource development to midstream lithium salt deep processing and lithium metal smelt to downstream lithium metal battery manufacturing and recycling. The company's lithium resources are located in many countries and regions around the world, and they have technologies of lithium brine extraction, lithium ore extraction, and lithium extraction from retired batteries. And next up, here we have it. Elon says the trial program for opening Tesla superchargers to other EVs has begun. Today, we are launching our non-Tesla supercharger pilot at 10 locations in the Netherlands. These 10 stations are now accessible to Dutch non-Tesla EV drivers via the Tesla app version 4.2.3 or higher. 
The non-Tesla supercharger pilot is currently limited to EV drivers who live in the Netherlands. They will be expanding, however, to additional markets shortly. Tesla is going to review the experience, monitor congestion, and then assess feedback before expanding Future sites, listen to this, will only be open to non-Tesla vehicles if there is available capacity. And all these non-Tesla owners have to do is download the app, select charge your non-Tesla, add a payment, plug in, select stall and tap start charging. And rather than just removing the charger, they do have to select stop charging to complete the session. And a nice feature for these non-Tesla users is that even they can view supercharging site availability info in the Tesla app. And yes, this will be more expensive for non-Tesla owners. We don't have any details yet as the prices will vary by region, but the per kilowatt hour price to charge can be lowered with a charging membership. And right now, this pilot is only accessible for C CCS enabled vehicles. Next up, I want to give a huge shout out to the Lucid team as they delivered their first Lucid Air Dream vehicles over the weekend at this rally event. And regardless of what you think about Lucid and Rawlinson and the stock, Let's not forget that Lucid was founded in 2007 under the name Ativa and originally focused on EV batteries and powertrains for other companies. Ativa has actually been the sole supplier of battery packs for Formula E racing for a number of years in a three-way partnership where Lucid designs and constructs the battery and battery management software, Sony supplies the cylindrical cells, and McLaren manages the logistics and trackside support. The physical battery packs, however, remain Lucid property and the battery cell chemistries are indeed Lucid specific. Prior to this deal with Formula E, battery packs had to be swapped out halfway through the races, but the new packs from Ativa eliminated this. We should have known Lucid had a few tricks up its sleeve because oftentimes racing technologies drive tech for road vehicles. And there's also the fact that the PIF or Saudi's Public Investment Fund owns about 60% of Lucid Motors, the fund has seen a rough 30x on its roughly $1 billion investment into Lucid, but it's not without controversy. As many people will not forget the scrutiny Saudi has faced following its alleged role in the brutal killing of the Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. But more on that is a topic for another video. Let's just take a moment to appreciate Lucid, its employees, and all the work that went into bringing this vehicle to market. And cheers to the future success of Lucid. <laughs> All right, so next up, Tesla releasing a new financial services product in China first. Hopefully this comes to America later, but we'll see. Basically what we have here is more options for buyers to now own a Tesla through Tesla's financial services. As you can see, you can choose a down payment ratio anywhere from 0% to 50% and a number of periods from 12 months to 60 months. But if you click on more financial solutions, purchasing cars through Tesla's self-operated financial leasing, starting from zero down payment, flexible choice of leasing period of one to five years, paying rent and using the vehicle in monthly installments, and obtaining vehicle ownership in accordance with the contract after the lease term expires. Yes, this is translated from Chinese into English. And we know that Tesla's goal is actually to drive down the cost. So with the material costs rising, Tesla is looking for other creative ways to do this and to get more people into a Tesla. Now with Tesla's financial services and also other things like Tesla insurance. But this last line here where it says, and obtaining vehicle ownership in accordance with the contract after the lease term expires. Now, I guess this could be a translation issue and I'm misinterpreting this. So let's tread carefully here. But if indeed you can lease or rent the vehicle in this way with these flexible options and then own the vehicle after that term, that would be new for Tesla and definitely a big deal as a lot of people do want the option of owning the vehicle after that lease term. So we'll have to wait and see, but it's great to see Tesla innovating and trying to drive the cost down any way they can. Next up, this picture is making its rounds and there's a lot of speculation about this matte black Cybertruck. Well, yes, I do think it's an option that a matte black Cybertruck is an option in some way, shape or form when it comes to production. I believe this picture is Photoshopped heavily. The Roadster even looks a little bit different. 
And there was also this comment, this is not a matte black Cybertruck, it's the original non-functional clay model. It's mentioned in the first Motor Trend article and it was on stage at the unveil as many people were taking pictures with it. And DMC Ryan from Ride the Lightning said this is correct. Source, I was at the Cybertruck unveiling and saw this rolling mule up close. So point being, let's just be careful with this speculation about this new matte black Cybertruck. And over the weekend, a lot of you have probably seen this, but Tesla Fact shared the infamous 4500 UAW bribe in the Build Back Better Act excludes employee owned US car factories like Tesla even if they were to form a union. Basically, it defines domestic assembly qualifications in a way that requires 50% plus of non-shareholder employees. Tesla employees are shareholders, so I don't wanna get into the details here. These images are linked below if you wanna check it out. But as I mentioned earlier, Elon has some strong feelings here saying Biden is a UAW sock puppet and that is why earlier he shared those articles about the UAW. And Gary Cruz shared this article, the second UAW president sentenced to 28 months in prison in union corruption probe. Elon said, yep, second UAW president in a row, unlikely to be the last. Link below if you want to read more. Next up, I think this news bit is going drastically overlooked. This is from the local news in Normal, Illinois, but the Rivian plans its largest expansion so far at the plant in Normal. Rivian filed plans with Normal's town government requesting approval of an amended site plan for a 623,000 square foot addition, which would be built along the western side of the local plant. It would increase the total size of the facility to about 3.9 million square feet, but a public hearing is scheduled for next Thursday before the planning commission. But no official word yet on what this new footprint would be used for. Next up, we have a quick discussion on the Tesla stock split, which is once again, much anticipated, maybe not this year, but could be early next year. Gary Black on Twitter said the last time Tesla split the stock was on Tuesday, 8.11, and from 8.11 to 8.31, basically 20 days after the split, Tesla rose 81%. But listen to this, a stock split requires board approval. Boards tend to meet once a month, and Tesla likely meets the second week of the month on Monday or Tuesday, given the earnings cadence. And Gary says, once we get past November, Tesla would likely have to wait until February of 2022. So of course, a lot of this depends on Tesla stock performance between now and spring of next year, but as I've said over on Patreon, I think it has plenty of room to run in this new price discovery mode. And I personally would like to see a 10 for one split. Just do it, take it from 1500 or so to 150 and be done for a while. But we'll keep an eye on this. And a Reddit user shared this screenshot from the Hertz website, seemingly the mobile version with a Model Y and it was coming soon. I could not find the Model Y on the United States version of the Hertz website, but this is very interesting because this would be huge for Uber drivers as a lot of their rides are going to the airport and having more cargo space, more room for passengers would just make the economics that much better for the Uber drivers and their deal with Hertz. So hopefully we do indeed see Model Ys here with Uber and Hertz in the US. And real quick here, a huge shout out to Ryan and the Kilowatts team for breaking the new EV cannonball record. In case you're not familiar, the cannonball record is a cross country run, which yes, it's an illegal underground race that started years ago with competitors attempting to get from New York City to the Los Angeles coast as quickly as possible. Yes, we're talking radars and sensors to avoid the police, going over 100 miles an hour, all of those illegal things. But the fastest recorded time was a 2019 Audi A8. It took 26 hours and 38 minutes. That's for all categories of vehicle. And Ryan and his friend used a Tesla Model S long range, which was actually rented from Turo. And yes, this was cleared with the owner, but it took them 42 hours and 17 minutes, the new fastest time for an EV. And at the superchargers, they use quick stops because the charging curve is better in the first half. So they'd arrive with a very low state of charge and leave around 50% because after 50%, the speed, the charging speeds taper off. It took them an average of 18 minutes per stop at the superchargers across 24 total stops, just over seven hours sitting still. And it was an unmodified vehicle. The only changes, they used the 19 inch Tempest wheels instead of the 21 inch performance wheels. And they relied solely on the Waze's app for warnings about police. And Ryan in the Kilowatts Twitter is linked in the description below. Next up, this right here is some really important news. So we have commercial registration for Tesla wall connectors. 
Basically, now companies that install these Gen 3 Tesla wall connectors can use them to make money, meaning many more hotels, businesses, certain places like that are going to have more incentive, financial incentive, to install these chargers for their guests. So directly from Tesla, you can purchase up to 12 wall connectors online, which yes, you can confirm if you go to the Tesla shop, it maxes out at 12 at $500 a pop. But if you are a developer, manager, or owner of commercial real estate, and you wanna buy more than 12 wall connectors, you can contact commercial charging at tesla.com. Then once the wall connectors are installed, please fill out the commercial services product registration form. And here you have the form itself, services scheduled for 2021, pay for use charging. Property managers will be able to collect a fee for the electricity they provide drivers. You can manage Tesla charging assets, you can set pricing, and you can see the analytics. But yes, there are some limitations and requirements for who can qualify for this program. Basically, you have to have a business, you have to be open to the public, you have to have employees that are going to be on site in case something goes wrong with the charger or you have to flip a switch. But as always, where there is a will, there is a way. So maybe you can just sell some gum and you know have one employee available during a certain set of hours. But very cool program here. I think this should incentivize more of these wider spread throughout the country. A quick note here on Sentry Mode Live View, it seems like there may be a 90 minute per day limit on this feature. That seems like plenty of time. I don't know who's spending an hour and a half watching Sentry Live footage. <laughs> Have a look at this video. This is great. A quick note here from the new Model X. Last week we talked about some of the efficiency improvements. One thing that I think went overlooked is now both the front and rear motors are permanent magnet synchronous reluctance motors, PMSRM. Previously the front motor was an induction type motor, so these permanent magnet motors are indeed an upgrade on the Model X. Over the weekend, COP26 kicked off, which is a global conference where countries meet to essentially come up with goals and targets to try to reduce CO2 emissions. This is an important event. As you can see, China is the number one emitter of CO2, followed closely by, yes, the United States. And I felt obligated to share these pictures from Wen Sun on Twitter of her garage. Now, how cool is this? I'm personally just envious of how clean it is. I mean, where are all of your garage items? Either way, very, very cool. And next up on YouTube, Engineerix shared this video of the new Plaid car computer. He does share some great insight. The full video is linked below, but I will leave you guys with a quick clip of something that may be pretty interesting. But that's all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. This is unpopulated, but it's labeled passenger display. So at one point, maybe they thought they were going to use a passenger display, or maybe they intend on using this in, you know, newer vehicles, like maybe the Cybertruck or so something where they're going to have a second display. I don't know.